Hey guys, Property Search, Think Ladfish. I'm Brett Legerwood and this is Property Rant. So today, it's actually, um, it's a fantastic question, but it very rarely or not enough does it get asked. And that is, it seems too good to be true, but what are the risks, okay? So I'm gonna deal with the risks first, then we'll deal with the seems too good to be true. Look, risks, uh, they are part of any investment. And, and if you think at any level that investing, you're gonna be able to blame somebody else, and if you go in thinking that, you're doing it totally wrong about. What you need to do, and when we talk about risks, there's, you know, what you're looking at is you're looking at how you're gonna get return on investment. That's the first thing you should look at. Because once you've got, you know, if there's no return on investment, it's no use in exploring the risks. So you look at your return on investment, make sure that's secure. Check it, double check it. And that means due diligence, that means research. And I'll make the distinction in a sec. Then what you do is once you know that there's money in it, then you look at how you can either mitigate the risks or remove them altogether, okay? And that's the general process that you follow when it comes to risks. Risks are everywhere, and anyone that says they're not, and anyone says they've mitigated them or got rid of them, you better check that claim massively. Because see, what I look at, it, and this is how you should distinguish, there's two sides to every investment, if you like. There is the due diligence and research, which you have to take responsibility for doing, okay? or get somebody independent of the commission and independent of the investment to look into it that you trust, that's competent, that potentially has PI insurance if they get it wrong, you know, and all these sort of things. So, so really the distinction here is whenever I'm listening to salespeople, I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at, are they giving me research due diligence? Are they giving me the sales spiel, okay? Because look, I can make a turd in the desert look pretty investable, you know, given the right story, given the right platform, given the right branding and all this sort of stuff, you know, and you'll find there's so many um, scams that happen that you look at them and go, you know what, that's compelling. I can see how I'm just getting catapulted into the investment because it seems just so easy. And look, there's no risk and this risk that was there, that's taken away. The story, you know, that, that happens all the time, okay? Now, I'm not gonna say, it, well, when I say all the time, it doesn't happen all the time. You know, you'll find that probably, in, and you know, according to us, is about 3% of deals go bad. About 3%, all right? Which, you know, is it's unfortunate when they do, and yes, you know, a lot of people's uh, a lot of people's natural reaction is they want to blame, but the reality is the only person that can take responsibility is yourself. And that's why I really, really, you know, I want to encourage you, do more research upfront than relying on anyone in the process. Now, in terms of risks, I look at three different types of risks in any investment, okay? So the first one is the property or the investment. So if we're looking at a property, that includes the area, that includes the development, the developer. So that includes that the property, if you like. Okay, now for a large degree, if the property's there, we can see it's a known quantity for most things, okay? There's a few things that may, you know, damp may come out, you know, afterwards. There's a few things that we can't guard upon, or we probably can guard upon, but then we should be, you know, we shouldn't have to rely, or we shouldn't have to worry about that, um, or there's ways to mitigate that. So the property is the first thing. The second thing is the people, okay? So the mortgage brokers, the solicitors, the letting agents, the managing agents, the, you know, building management agent, if you like. You know, so all these people that are part of your investment. Because remember, this investment is not just talking about the investment before you buy it, before you commit to it, but also after and the entire time of holding. So you're looking up front before you make that decision for potentially five or 10 years of things that can happen. So it's quite a responsibility. So we've got the property, we've got the people, and then finally is the deal. And the deal is where I see a lot of things go wrong, okay? Now look, all three I've seen things go wrong, but you know, this is where I see so many people getting sold because there's a compelling story, because there's a glossy brochure, because it just seems too good to be true, people go for it. And because it's got a high return, you know, 15%, you know, it's like, hold on, you know, that's alarm bells ringing. And if you're not sure, read my Ponzi scam bad business book, okay, um, which is on the website, downloadable free, because that's got stories in there of actual things that happen, all right? so. People, um, uh, sorry, yeah, people, property, 
and the deal. You've got to look at all those three things. Now, the key is take responsibility, spend the time up front. If you do that, you will be rewarded by having an investment that doesn't fall over, that doesn't turn into a scam or bad business model or Ponzi scheme. And you know, really, I, I can't stress this enough. If you're not gonna do the due diligence and the research independently, you know, and that means checking, rechecking everything that the, the sales or marketing spiel says, everything that says on the brochure. You know, if it says a 20 minute walk, go and you don't have to walk it these days, use Google Maps, okay? Or you know, the little yellow man, get him to go for a walk, you know? So these sort of things are in place and you can do an amazing amount of research and diligence from your home and from your computer. For what you can't, then you've got solicitors and brokers and various people on the way that you should be able to rely on that have PI insurance, that have property regress schemes and ombudsmans and, and all these sort of things in place. So the system is relatively good, but it is absolutely not good enough that you can avoid doing it, all right? Because you will lose, um, you know, not all the time, most of the time, by far the most of the time, it'll go perfectly. But the times it'll lose, you potentially lose you know, all your investment, which you don't want. So guys, have a great day. Live with passion.